Hello everyone, this is Jonah from White River Rails, and this is going to be part two of the MK50-3 build. So I've gotten a decent amount of progress done on them since the first video. I've mostly got the two shells put together, and I've started working on getting the trucks fixed to the frames, which I've just about finished that. But here's the two shells here. They're pretty well put together. I've just got to finish doing some sanding and filling in on a little bit more seams before I can actually start putting the detail parts on. But the way I went about building these shells was I had uh, I talked about in the first video. I made a cut down the existing shell and then down the back here to make use of the kind of sill here because it was a little bit different, quite a bit different than the SD51, so I needed to use the actual MK5000 frame rather than the uh, SD51. But the only issue that left me with, there was a giant gap running along here, just because of the step-up piece here wasn't present on the other shell. So what I ended up having to do for that is I just cut, cut it off of the SD50 sill and pieced it onto the existing shell. And it worked pretty good. And then this section back here is all the SD50 shell. And then right in here is where it's joined up to the cab and dynamic brake section. Originally, I was just going to putty the seam up here, but the gap was bigger than I had planned. So I decided just to piece in some styrene, and then I'm probably going to putty around the edges and sand it just to kind of make it blend a little bit better. But once it's all painted, it'll look kind of like it's supposed to be there. And then this side's a little more simple. Just the seam down here mostly. Then I add some stuff I had to kind of fill in along the sides on both of the shells. And on the backs, I also had to cut out a recessed brake wheel area. I had to do that for both of them because the SD50 shells did not have that, but the old MK50 ones did, and the prototype still had it. And here's kind of what the finished frame looks like. I've got both the Bowser trucks mounted to the bottom of it and they fit pretty nice. I had to do a little bit of modifications to the frame itself to get this to work and I'll show you that with this other one that I've got still disassembled. So here's the other frame and you can kind of see what I did. I had to make a cut in the weight here. It used to pull out more around here and I also had to cut off the old truck bolster which was one of these things. I had to cut those out because they didn't quite line up with where the DeFasco trucks needed to go. So I had to make my own. And to do that, I just put a piece of styrene strip going across. It was just a thick plastic styrene. And then I cut a hole in it. And then I actually just used a nail to drop through it to act as the actual truck pin that slots into the truck and kind of holds it in place. I had to do that on both sides. This one here was about the same on the back. And that allowed me to position the trucks exactly where I needed them to go. And then on the trucks themselves, I had to do a tiny bit of modifications. I had to trim a little bit of detail off of the middle here. And I also had to add a spacer on the top to make them sit properly and still be able to swing without rubbing against the frame. Because it appears these trucks on the Bowser units go further up into the frame than like Atheron trucks do. So I had to kind of notch off part of this on the top. There was a detail part up here, but once that got removed, it fits up there pretty good. One of the other modifications I had to do was I had to kind of kit bash the drive shafts in order to get them to work because the Bowser and the Atherton ones use a different mounting method from going to the truck to the motor. So I had to use both of them, one on each end. But in order to make these, I had to get some styrene tubing and then slide both ends of the drive shafts into the tube. That way it's nice, strong, and rigid, and everything's one piece again. But they, that worked really well. I haven't had any issues after I've gotten them all glued together. The fit is really tight, so I don't see these having any issues in the future. Here's this one put back together. They just sit real nicely once they're assembled. And they do stay on. 
So you can see the drive shaft in there. It has just enough clearance to fit. It's the same on the other side. But if anybody was wondering, this is the styrene that I used for the truck pin thing and the tubing. But now that that's over with, I'm going to go ahead and start doing some cleanup on the shells and prepare them for detail parts now. All right, so now I've gotten the shells pretty much all detailed up. Got all the grab irons, antennas, stuff under the frame put on there. And now they're pretty much ready for the base coat of paint. That way I can double check and see if there's anything I need to go back and fill in or sand down before I put on the actual paint. Let's look at the back. And I started out with Ather and Grab Irons on this one. So like I liked how they look a little bit better. But once I ran out, I went ahead and switched over to the BLMA ones on this one here. And this is what I'll be using for my primer. It's just a base white by Tamiya. Usually I use something more like this for primer, which is actual surface primer, but I couldn't find this anywhere locally. Everybody was out of it, so I just kind of had to settle for this instead. All right, so I got the base color of paint applied. I went ahead and just painted them gray. I was having a little bit of issues with the base white, so I wanted to go ahead and just put the gray on over that and make sure everything was still looking all right. And I'm pretty happy with how they're coming together. I also went ahead and painted the truck silver. But I'm going to leave it at this for this video. And I'll get a little bit more into more paint and whatnot in the next part. But anyways, I hope you all have enjoyed. And I will see you next time.